Welcome to this Good Friday service as we ask the question, what's good about Friday? The Bible reading comes from Isaiah 53. Who has believed our message and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up before him like a tender shoot and like a root out of dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by mankind, a man of suffering and familiar with pain. Like one from whom people hide their faces, he was despised, and we held him in low esteem. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering, yet we considered him punished by God, 
stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. We all like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned, away, turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before its shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away, yet who of his generation protested? He was cut off from the land of the living, for the transgression of my people he was punished. He was assigned a grave with the wicked, and with the rich in his death, though he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the Lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer, and though the Lord makes make his life an offering for sin, he will see his offspring and prolong his days, and the law, and the will of the Lord will prosper in his hand. After he has suffered, he will see the light of life and be satisfied by his knowledge. My righteous servant will justify many and will bear their iniquities. Therefore I give him a portion among the great, and he will divide the spoils with the strong, because he poured out his life unto death, and was numbered with the transgressors. For he bore the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. People ask, what's good about Friday? It's good that that prophecy that we have just read and heard sung to us was fulfilled. It's good that God kept and honoured his promise to send one who would suffer and die in our place. And that's good for you and for me, because it means we are saved from the punishment reserved for sin. It means we don't have to die in our sin. Rather, we can be freed from sin, reunited with God our Father and granted fullness of life now and forevermore. Jesus was good. And Jesus was prepared to do what was required of him by his father to enable that prophecy to be fulfilled and the promise to come good. Jesus was so good. He was the only one good enough to make Good Friday not just good, but actually possible.
let's remind ourselves of what actually happened on Good Friday. What did Jesus go through? What did he do and say to make Friday good? I'm reading from Luke chapter 23, verses 23 to 47. The mob shouted louder and louder, demanding that Jesus be crucified, and their voices prevailed. So Pilate sentenced Jesus to die as they demanded. As they had requested, he released Barabbas, the man in prison for insurrection and murder. But he turned Jesus over to them to do as they wished. As they led Jesus away, a man named Simon, who was from Cyrene, happened to be coming in from the countryside. The soldiers seized him and put the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A large crowd trailed behind, including many grief-stricken women. But Jesus turned and said to them, Daughters of Jerusalem, don't weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For the days are coming when they will say, Fortune in, fortunate indeed are the women who are childless, the wombs that have not borne a child, and the breasts that have never nursed. People will beg the mountains, fall on us, and plead with the hills, bury us. For if these things are done when the tree is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two others, both criminals, were led out to be executed with him. When they came to a place called the skull, they nailed him to the cross. And the criminals were also crucified, one on his right and one on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they are doing. And the soldiers gambled for his clothes by throwing dice. The crowd watched and the leaders scoffed. He saved others, they said. Let him save himself if he really is God's Messiah, the chosen one. The soldiers mocked him too by offering him a drink of sour wine. They called out to him, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. A sign was fastened above him with these words, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals hanging beside him scoffed, So you're the Messiah, are you? Prove it by saving yourself, and us too while you're at it. But the other criminal protested, Don't you fear God, even when you've been sentenced to die? We deserve to die for our crimes, but this man hasn't done anything wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus replied, I assure you, today you will be with me in paradise. By this time, it was about noon, and darkness fell across the whole land until three o'clock. The light from the sun was gone. And suddenly, the curtain in the sanctuary of the temple was torn down the middle. Then Jesus shouted, Father, I entrust my spirit into your hands. And with those words, he breathed his last. When the Roman officer overseeing the execution saw what had happened, he worshipped God and said, Surely this man was innocent. And when all the crowd that came to see the crucifixion saw what had happened, they went home in deep sorrow. But Jesus' friends, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance, watching. People ask, what's good about Friday? The obedience, the humility, the mercy and the forgiveness shown by Jesus is good. The gift of God's love and grace as shown by Jesus on the cross makes Friday good. The power of the cross to transform lives makes Friday good for you and for me. So how will you respond to all that makes Friday good?
I invite you to join me in this prayer, based on the words of the song featured in the band piece. Jesus Christ, I think upon your sacrifice. You became nothing, poured out to death. Many times I've wondered at your gift of life, and I'm in that place once again. Once again I look upon the cross where you died. I'm humbled by your mercy, and I'm broken inside. Once again I thank you. Once again I pour out my life. Now you are exalted to the highest place, King of the heavens, where one day I'll bow. But for now, I marvel at your saving grace, and I'm full of praise once again. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the cross, my friend, my saviour, my Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. When we consider the details of Juju's betrayal, arrest, trial, torture and execution, is it really any wonder that people ask the question, what's good about Friday? As Christians, have we tried to temper the horror of it all with the use of this word good to describe the day on which the Son of God suffered so cruelly and died such a painful death? I don't think so. We cannot and we should not shy away from the horrific ordeal that Jesus went through. We shouldn't minimise it or sugarcoat it. Neither should we revel in it. But adding the word good to Friday doesn't do that. Adding the word good, I believe, helps us to acknowledge and understand all the good that Jesus did in order to make us good. From the beginning of time, Jesus knew his destiny. He knew his father's will for him. He knew the prophecies about him. And yet, whilst we know that he asked for what was to come to be taken away from him, when he prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane, he ultimately was humbly obedient to his father, even unto betrayal by a friend, a mock trial, the scoffing, the torture, the shame, death. He deals with the persecution and suffering as one who knows there is a greater purpose beyond his physical death, as one who knows that this is necessary for God's plan to be fulfilled as one who knows the peace and joy of being at the centre of God's will, as one who knows God will be glorified through it all, as one who knows you and I will be saved by the events that he must suffer, as one who knows all the good that will come about as the result of Good Friday. On that first Good Friday, Jesus' only response to the injustice he is suffering is to say, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they are doing. And then to the thief on the cross beside him, he says, I assure you, today you will be with me in paradise. In these words from Jesus on the cross, there is no condemnation, no anger, no vile retort. Rather, we hear his goodness and it is extended to those who have done and said the most horrific things towards him, others, the community, God himself. In those words we hear the mercy he extends to those who deserve punishment for their wrongdoing. We hear the forgiveness he extends to all who need it. We hear the compassion he has for all people. We hear the conviction he has for all people to be saved for all people to be in relationship with him and his father forevermore. We hear unconditional love being lavished on sinners of every kind. We hear grace beyond human comprehension being offered to all. No one is beyond the goodness of Jesus. Lives are changed, futures are transformed, and this is what makes Friday good. This is what makes Friday good for you and for me still today. We may not be torturers, murderers or thieves, but we are all sinners. And so he also says these words to us from his cross. He says these words so that we might know that we too are saved by his goodness. Paul wrote this about our sin and Jesus' death in Romans chapter 3 verses 22 to 24. 
This righteousness is given through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. There is no difference between Jew and Gentile, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ. As Jesus dies, we are privileged to be privy to the response of the centurion standing at the foot of the cross. Having witnessed the day's events and Jesus' reaction to it all, this Roman centurion worships God and says, surely this man was the son of God. All he has seen and heard has changed his opinion. It's opened his eyes and enabled him to come into relationship with God. For him, this was a Good Friday, for his life was transformed by it. Why was this day good? Because this day is all about the goodness of God as seen in his son Jesus. It's the greatest display of his sacrificial love and his matchless grace and mercy, all of which is supremely displayed on and made available to us through the cross of Jesus, through the way he reacted to his ordeal, through the words he spoke, through the way he reached all mankind with his goodness. The events of this day secure forgiveness and therefore freedom from sin and the gift of eternal life for all who believe in Jesus as the Christ, for all who look on his cross and accept his actions and his words for themselves personally. How will you respond to Jesus today? Will it be a day when you look upon his cross and hear his words and truly understand that he did and said all of this for you? He died to make you good because he is good. Will this be a good Friday for you? As we reflect on the words of the singing company song, I stand amazed. I invite you to picture yourself at Calvary, standing at the foot of the cross of Jesus listening to the words of Jesus, witnessing the death of Jesus, and then make your response on this Good Friday.
Heavenly Father, we remember the day your son Jesus died. We do not celebrate his crucifixion, but we do acknowledge its deep significance. God of our salvation, help us to understand our personal relationship to the cross. Help us to accept and feel the results of Christ's words from the cross. Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they are doing. May our remembrance of this day bring us hope and peace as we begin to understand what is so good about Friday. And may we respond with the declaration that he is the Son of God, our Lord and Saviour, worthy of our extravagant praise, our whole life worship, our deep devotion and committed service. We thank you for your goodness towards us and we thank Jesus for making the ultimate sacrifice for us. For he was the only one good enough to make us good. Amen. When we understand what's good about Friday, then we learn to love the cross of Jesus, to hold it dear, to value it, to cherish it. For us it is no longer a place of shame, but a place of love, grace and mercy, where we know he died to make us good. loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood, be glory and power 
for ever and ever. Amen.